Good afternoon. Thank you for logging on today during your lunch break from the Zoom universe to join us for the launch of the Charlotte Regional Transportation Coalition, or CRTC. My name is Reverend Ray McKinnon, and I'll be your host for this launch show today. Now, whether you are on your phone or your laptop at work or at play, uh, we, we all came here today because we are excited to learn about the work of the CRTC and how we can get involved to connect uh, your neighbors in the Charlotte region for our future. Now, today our show will be interactive. We have ongoing games like virtual bingo, some text polls, and a quiz bowl for our grand prize later in the show. Now, we want to uh, be sure that you don't miss anything, so let me uh, get settled on the ground rules right now. Now, first, our ongoing virtual bingo has already started. I just want to invite you to click the link in the chat feature to ex, uh, to access your to access your virtual bingo card. Now you'll notice that uh, instead of numbers, it's, it's filled with all buzzwords. So if you hear one of the words during the show, mark it off and get one step closer to bingo. Now, if you get bingo, uh, write that text in the chat so our team can get your information and share your prize. Now, since the show is jam packed, we won't have time to take your questions live, but we invite you to feel free to comment in the uh, in the Q&A or Facebook comments. We'll follow up with your questions via email after the show. OK, our first guest is Tariq Kiley. He is the CRTC coordinator. So welcome to the show today. So let's just jump right in. Who is CRTC? Tariq, and, and why is the work and mission of the CRTC important? How you doing today, Ray? Thanks everyone for having me. The Charlotte Regional Transportation Coalition is a new organization, or rather a new coalition, which started in February 2020 of this year. So our coalition, short, is the CRTC, Charlotte Regional Transportation Coalition. We seek to ab effectively advocate for our an equitable, safe, trans sustainable transportation system that improves accessibility and mobility for all of Charlotte and surrounding areas residents. The CRTC is founded and convened by Sustaining Charlotte and funded by the Energy Foundation. We just wanted to make sure that we do acknowledge Sustaining Charlotte and the Energy Foundation for their support. We are in the process of growth. We have about 20 members today these members include a steering committee made of the West Boulevard Neighborhood Coalition, the North End Community Coalition, and Charlotte East. The steering committee has been instrumental in making decisions for the growth and betterment of the coalition in its first year. Now, as we move into the year 2021, it's time for us to grow. This growth is important because Charlotte is on the precipice of implementing a bundle of transportation infrastructure investments. The Charlotte Moves Task Force, whose job was to deliberate on the creation and funding of a transformational mobility network, they had their last meeting on December 3rd. They will be presenting their recommendations to Charlotte City Council on December 14th, so it's vital that we stay vocal about equitable transportation development issues going into this new year. We also have to focus on equitable and sustainable development in the Crescent or the ARC which is the inner west, north, and east sides of Charlotte, which is made of primarily black and brown communities. And we also need to focus on the surrounding region. So why, why is it important, uh, your involvement, why is that important uh, in this work? Well, personally, I'm fascinated with this intersection of transportation planning and community organizing. I personally believe that Charlotte could truly benefit from a comprehensive investment in transportation infrastructure. If you look at the economic development which occurred along the Lynx Blue Line light rail, you see that it was primarily a good thing. Now, transit-oriented development areas do have a tendency to face a rising cost of living, but in my mind, that just means that as a city, we need to think more holistically about transportation development and land use. For example, affordable housing plans could go hand in hand with transit-oriented development plans along the light rail lines. 
So the good thing is that in Charlotte, we're still growing and we have the leeway to make these decisions as the silver line light rail develops, for example, we could address questions, uh, economic mobility and accessibility. And I do want to be part of that discussion. That's, that's, that's great. So why, why do you think it's important for us to have a regional focus in our, our transportation? Well, in my mind, we have to look at Charlotte and surrounding towns as an integrated entity. We have the northern towns of Huntersville and Davidson, for example, who consist of a lot of people who commute to work in Charlotte. Some people who live in the surrounding region areas, they want to be better connected to the urban core, and they also want to enjoy their benefits of suburban living. living. So as we approach transportation with a regional lens, we have to understand the connectivity that people want across our area. Some people want the option of taking buses back and forth from Charlotte and suburban areas, but they don't want the limitation of the traditional express bus model where express buses only travel to the urban core and vice versa at peak rush hour times. So, you know, I think one thing I think is interesting is that you were so passionate about this work that you decided to work for them, right? So can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, yes. I am truly passionate about this work. I studied geography with an emphasis in community planning at UNC Charlotte in graduate school. While I was at UNC Charlotte, I found the transportation and land use class to be one of my favorite classes. It was fascinating to me because we did a study of the links Blue Line Light Rail, and this was prior to the explosion of economic development that now surrounds the Blue Line Light Rail. So over time, I've just been fascinated with the study of this. There's also a concept in my mind that's truly relevant called spatial mismatch. The spatial mismatch was a phenomenon in the 1980s and 1990s where inner city workers cannot reverse commute to access jobs in suburban areas. So many of the people living in inner city areas who were affected by the spatial mismatch were black and brown people. So I began to realize how economic and racial segregation can be upheld by a transit system. So I'm also a big fan of community organizing. In 2008, I read Barack Obama's book, The Audacity Hope, the audacity of hope, and I found it very inspiring. At the time, I was living in a Thomasboro neighborhood, so I volunteered to work with the Thomasboro Neighborhood Association and was elected to the board of directors for that neighborhood association. I became involved with the Thomasboro Community Garden. The garden didn't have the longevity that I would have hoped for it, but it was an eye-opening experience in community organizing. So working at Sustained Charlotte, on this coalition blends my interest in transportation planning and community organizing. I am truly fascinated with this contemporary discussion that is going to surround transportation planning thought in Charlotte. Nice. That's wonderful. So given Charlotte's uh, place in the nation for economic mobility, what are some of the particular pressures or constraints for communities of color and lower income uh, communities when transportation access is inequitable? Well, I spoke before about the spatial mismatch in the suburban versus inner city divide that we, the system that we've inherited, the spatial mismatch in divisions, social economic divisions that we've been handed from the suburban areas and the inner city areas they have created economic barriers to employment for inner city residents by hindering mobility. This is the system we inherited. So we have to consider the desire to access places of business and other desirable destinations, and we don't want people to be isolated. So for example, if you live in a food desert and you don't have access to a grocery store with fresh produce choices, then that definitely can affect your quality of life and also your feeling of connection throughout the city. So not being able to access desirable dest destinations 
within a reasonable amount of time can also be frustrating. If you can't, as a person, trip chain, if you don't have the ability to access multiple destinations within a reasonable amount of time, then that definitely can affect your quality of life and your feelings of, of effect, efficacy. So it becomes kind of an inequitable situation if you cannot afford a, to own a car. So in my opinion, retail, entertainment, your doctor's office, these should not be out of reach just because you don't own a personal vehicle. So for the sake of equity, black and brown people and people in these neighborhoods deserve the same opportunities to access the market and desirable destinations as people who own a car. So I think we need to move away from neighborhoods divided according to race and socioeconomic status. And I will hope to see a city with mixed income and mixed race neighborhoods. I do believe this is the wave of the future. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tariq, uh, for breaking all that down for us and sharing your passions uh, with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, and now I would like to welcome our incredible mayor, uh, Mayor Va Laos, to uh, give us more. It's mayor Laos. Thank you very much, um, Ray, for um, giving me a few minutes to talk. And Tark, you have said so many great wis words of wisdom that I'm going to try not to repeat them. But let me start with this. Um, all of you are aware that we um, are con have just completed a major effort by 25 citizens led by former Mayor Harvey Gantt for us work on our mobility choices. Um, the mayor and those citizens on a task force have now presented or will present their report to the Charlotte City Council on December the 14th. Following that report, we will refer the um, report to our Transportation Planning and Environment Committee. And we'll ask the council to think about it over the next several weeks and discuss it again at um, the council's um, annual strategy retreat which is not really a retreat, it's now a big Zoom meeting, and um, we'll, we'll talk about it again there. But let me tell you the basics of um, why I did Charlotte Moves. I remember it was March 9th when COVID came to us, and I had been talking with Mayor Gann about the issues that we were having to do two things. Um, one, I felt like we had really put our energy behind the affordable housing initiative. When I was elected mayor, we had a $15 million bond. We moved to 50 and we've continued to do $50 million a year um, every two years for affordable housing. We've got 4,000 plus units under um, contract for construction or renovation right now. All of those affordable with particular attention to um, the needs that we have to get people into housing um, with for the reasons that we all see during COVID. The next thing that um, we looked at is jobs. Um, in the last two years, we brought in over 10,000 jobs and they're from all ranges. But what we need to do as the fifth largest, fifth the fifth fastest growing city in this country, the 15th largest city in this country, we can't stop. We had to begin to deal with COVID, but we also had to begin to think about the forward thinking that we needed. And mobility was the one connection that we weren't making between, as Tark would say, a place to live and the places that you need to go to live a quality of life. And I think that what Charlotte Moves is doing is giving us the opportunity for the quality of life that we can be a model across this country and be one of the best places to live, work, as well as um, be a part of a great community. So let me tell you some of the things that um, we've learned that were particular, our particular interest, I think, to your group. We have over 13,000 people living in primarily in the Crescent that don't have access to a vehicle. So we have to have reliable bus service. We have to have reliable rail because there are also special needs. We, we don't ordinarily think about this, but people that have special needs, um, think about our aging population, um, think about those that have disabilities or special abilities, and that they will have to take mass transit to be able to have the quality of life that we would all want them to have. Partnering between the affordable house costs 
of the housing cost and mobility costs in our community, 51% of people's disposable income are often devoted to those two functions. Just think about it. The taxes on your car, the insurance on your car, the maintenance on your car, the gas that you put into it. All of those add up. If we could reduce the cost of mobility, that puts more disposable income into everyone's pockets. And finally, I think the thing that we're looking at, you know, Charlotte has always had great plans and we've been very, very um, good stewards. We have a plan, we approve it, and we incrementally adjust for it. But this is the time not to think incrementally. We need sidewalks and we need them now. We need bike lanes, we need them now. We need to deal with congestion. We need to deal with our mass transit system. All of these are identified adopted plans that require funding. And now we have an option of how to do this. As I said, we're just beginning the process, but I hope that your group will find a way to challenge us, to ask the tough questions, to give us advice on what we should be doing as we create a more equitable city because we're connecting the idea that you can afford to live here, you can have a job that pays you a good working wage, and you have the ability to connect with mobility choices. So thank you for having me today. I'm going to listen to the remainder. I will not be playing bingo, however. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mayor Lyles, for your leadership and for understanding the connections between equity and jobs and, and how all of this is interconnected. We're so grateful for you being here and so grateful for your leadership on this. Uh, so everyone, I want to invite you to stay right there where you are, and we'll be right back after these words uh, from our sponsor. Do you want to create better connections for the future of our region? Then join the Charlotte Regional Transportation Coalition. Get involved. Be a voice. The CRTC is connecting now for our future. Visit connectourregion.org today. to visit uh, connectourregion.org, connectourregion.org, and become a member of this powerful coalition. What's that? We, we have breaking news. We have a, a message that we have to share with you right now. Producers, pl please take us live. Hello everyone, this is County Commissioner Mark Jarrell and I'd like to take a moment to congratulate the Charlotte Regional Transportation Coalition on their official launch. And I'm excited because we know that access to public transportation is such a critical issue in our community. Uh, and it's really, frankly, a critical issue for all residents across all demographics. and the CRTC is using their resources to highlight the critical need for transportation options and how it's directly linked to economic mobility. And so this initiative we know will have a significant impact on our socioeconomically disadvantaged and our most vulnerable. And I'd like to extend a huge thank you to the CRTC for their efforts to raise the voices of the underserved and to support transportation choices that are going to connect people, um, not only each other, but also to other critical points such as jobs, healthcare, education, healthy food options, arts and culture, and so much more. We know that we can enhance the quality of life for all people in all communities, and this is another step forward for the community, and I am so excited. And again, I wanna say thank you, congratulations, Please consider me a trusted partner as we move forward. Take care, everyone, and stay safe.
Wow, that was a, a great message. Thank you so much for that, Commissioner Jarrell. Uh, here is another example, friends, of, of why this is so important. Uh, let's, let's meet Victor. Hello, I'm Victor E. Duar, and I'm here to talk about the bus system, and this is what I have to say. Uh, before my father bought a car, my family rode the bus everywhere, as the bus system was our only form of transportation back then. I remember having to walk far just to get to a bus stop, wait long amounts of time to get on the bus, and having to sit inside the bus for hours on end in order to get where I was going. Uh, these are not problems that only we experienced, as many have lived through and are living through these conditions as well. It's a slog to get anywhere by bus, but I am hopeful that this project will fix many of the bus system's problems. Bus only lane is only a start, and I know this coalition will do their best to make public transportation better for the people of Charlotte, like me. Uh, buses have had a bad trans reputation in the city for it being slow and unreliable. But the sooner we make a change, the better. Thank you for allowing me this opportunity to speak, and best of luck to this and future projects. Wow, Victor, thank you so much for sharing that. And I also want to acknowledge that we have other elected officials here today, so we want to thank them for being here uh, with us as well. All right, so, um, you know, it, it really is important uh, that we make these investments in our transportation system so that more people like Victor uh, can have access to better opportunities uh, in the future. It's really a matter of equity. Um, so that's important. Thank you again, Victor. Uh, I, I want to give you a quick reminder uh, to type bingo in the chat when you win. Uh, we are looking, uh, we are looking for blackout bingo winners too. That's when you get everything, every uh, square filled in. Um, so we're, we're looking for that uh, as well. Okay, um, our next guest is a resident uh, of one of the region's largest suburbs um, and, and a good friend of mine, and she's here to describe her experience. So let's welcome uh, Michelle Blumenthal. So Michelle, um, welcome again. Do you feel that you are easily connected to the things that you like to do in the center city of Charlotte or in Uptown? Hi, Ray. Um, actually, absolutely not. Um, uh, buses to, I live in Huntersville, and buses to and from Huntersville run only during the week and only during rush hour, as Tariq had said, mentioned. Um, the last one from Charlotte back to Huntersville leaves at 6 p.m. Um, so you can't stay after work or work late. Um, also, um, the Ada Jenkins Center, which is a not-for-profit organization helping those in poverty break the cycle and um, gain ind economic independence. It's located in Davidson, as I said, and a bus trip from the Ada Jenkins Center in Davidson to the Goodwill Opportunity Campus in Charlotte and its job development programs takes close to two hours with three bus transfers plus walking um, three quarters of a mile. Wow. Wow. So, Michelle, what are some of the what are some of the impediments that you face uh, when you try to, you know, maybe bike or walk from your neighborhood uh, to get to work in Uptown Charlotte or hang out with your friends in South End? Can you talk to some of those impediments? Sure. Um, there are several of them. Uh, the schedule is very limited, as I mentioned. Um, the express bus stop is a 25 minute walk from my home. Uh, there aren't bike paths or sidewalks all the way from my home to the express bus stop. So, um, you know, there are some, but not all the way. So if I were to brave the traffic and bike to the bus stop, there's no place to secure my bike. Um, and then the three bus lines that run within the three towns of North Mecklenburg, which are um, Huntersville, Cornelius and Davidson, um, those three bus lines are the village rider and they run once an hour between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. during the week. When I say 8 p.m., that's when the last bus arrives at its last destination. So that's not the last time you can get on the bus. Um, and those buses start later and stop earlier on the weekends. Wow. 
and they pretty much run only north south without any way to get from east to west. Wow, that's very insightful. So, so Michelle, what are some of the, the ways, um, additional connections then in your neighborhood uh, would enable you and your neighbors to move around a lot more easily and accessibly? Well, if the express bus ran more frequently, more frequently or later and on weekends, I could take it to Charlotte instead of my car and not worry about how I'm going to get back home. Um, and if the village rider, that's the um, bus that runs within the towns, ran more frequently and included routes that went east-west, not just north-south, it would provide greater mobility and access to services and resources for people who don't own a car, um, especially those who are, aren't physically able to walk or bike. Um, another, um, another way would be continuous, safe bike paths and greenways connecting neighborhoods to retail. And that would allow people who don't have a car to participate more fully in society and have greater access to what they need, such as jobs, educational opportunities, health care, excuse me, health care, healthy food. And um, finally, it would all encourage people who do have cars to walk or bike rather than drive. Okay. So Michelle, how can the CRTC give you um, a voice and to help you build a solution? Well, it, it can provide a forum for um, regular people okay. like me to describe the challenges they face and brainstorm solutions, such as providing a covered area for people to secure their bi bikes at the bus stop, um, offering safe connected greenways and bike paths, um, Day passes for people who don't need a monthly bus pass, but may need to take several buses in one day. Um, uh, greater bus frequency, of course, additional bus routes, of course, and also allowing people to pay with bills or an app rather than coins, um, <laughs> which I have to pay with coins if I, if I do want to take a bus into Charlotte and it fits my schedule, I have to pay with coins. Oh, wow. So, yeah. I did not know that. Um, so thank you so much, Michelle. Um, thank you for sharing. And it really sounds like we have some challenges to work through. Um, but I'm sure uh, that the CRTC and its members, which we invite you to join and become one, uh, we, can, we can do it together. Thank you for having me. All right. Up next, we will play for a chance to win the grand prize, Queen City Rules. So get ready. All right. All right. Our, our next guests are um, our next guests are a special panel of CRTC members who are dedicated dedicated to this coalition. So let's welcome Maureen Galeski, Chris Danis, and Melissa Gaston to the show. Welcome everyone. Maureen, um, Maureen working diligently to is working diligently to ensure communities don't be left behind um, is 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 really hard work. So can you talk to us a bit about the deserts for critical services throughout the Charlotte region? So like, um, is it true that some areas don't have grocery stores or pharmacies and those sorts of things for miles? Uh, yes, um, the art actually runs through uh, southwest into west into the neighborhoods of the north end and over to East Charlotte. And there is a lack of access to critical services such as uh, healthy food, pharmacies and banking institutions. And there's also limited multimodal transportation connectivity. So um, if you look outside of this arc, which is um, you know, we've always talked about the crescent, but now we're looking at a bigger area of, uh, of low income is the arc. But if you look outside of the arc, you'll see that there actually is easy access to these critical services. So the demographics of the low income and the lack of the quality, high quality transit 
really account for the desert for critical services. So consider this, um, you're dependent upon public, tra uh, public transportation. Um, you, how are you gonna shop for food, your medications and pick up cash? You know, can you do this on one route? Uh, can you have to make multiple stops? Are they uh, time consuming, inconvenient connections? Uh, those are problems that those that are dependent upon public transportation and those that have the low income in our urban neighborhoods um, face. And you gotta think also about the fact that if you are a public transit user, there is a limit. Uh, you know, it's like you get on a bus, you can't carry too many groceries. So you're gonna have to stop more frequently for groceries. So I think those basic needs of, of health, healthy food and medical care, they really need to be available and easily accessible for all of our residents in Charlotte-Mecklenburg region. Okay. Um, so Maria, how is the CRTC working to make sure that our residents get fair access to these critical services? Well, first off, our subcommittee members actually live in the areas of the um, ARC, and then we also volunteer. We are advocates. So we're asking our neighborhoods, our schools, our um, businesses, and our nonprofits to engage with us, to join us with this coalition so that we can have those specific uh, issues that are found in each of these communities that may not always be equal, but to know, you know, where are the shortcomings? Where are the unmet needs? Where are the um, areas that we need to raise up in a, in, a, in a voice that can be heard in a bigger way? So we want to be able to ensure that um, we are heard, that we attend our public meetings, whether it's local, regional, and that we are also uh, providing that link back to the community. The idea of a very open and active communication is a real uh, essential piece of this transportation planning. Thank you. So Chris, um, one, of the, one of the biggest messages uh, you want to get out to our friends and neighbors um, is that the time is, is now. Uh, why is it important to get involved right now? Oh, thank you, Reverend McKinnon. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Now is important because the Charlotte Department of Transportation CDOT is currently developing a strategic mobility plan and it's in support of the cities of Charlotte's 2040 comprehensive plan and the Unified Development Ordinance or the UDL. All of this is happening now. So it's a really carpe diem moment to get our voices to be heard. The Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation Department is also preparing a new master plan. And this MEC playbook, which is a Greenway master plan, is being updated. And it's very important that for connectivity and multimodal connectivity to work for equity for all, that the city and the county work together. And as Mayor Vi Lyles mentioned, a uh, transpiration ref referendum based on the work of the Charlotte Moves Task Force is being presented to the City Council on Monday, December 14th. And uh, that is anticipating a referendum in the fall of 2021. And it's up to us to really insert our voices for our community needs and transportation equity now, why these plans are under development, open to feedback, and um, however we can get our voices heard, it's important. Thank you. You, you, you all are, are really galvanizing the community and the neighborhood associations to, to really take action and to help uh, to plan for the future of their neighborhoods, which are our neighborhoods. So how, how is that work coming along, Chris? Well, it's, it's been interesting in, in, in these times, but we have made a lot of one-to-one uh, -one phone calls. We've uh, introduced ourselves even on walks in our neighborhood or um, through you know, social media and emails. Um, and it's a big task. And we're working with schools and nonprofits and businesses to get the message out because we're all in this together. And um, it's really important to help people understand why the work of CRTC matters to them and their families. So um, not everyone knows what a regional transportation coalition does or why it matters, but it really is this neighborhood grassroots voice to help everyone understand what are the needs in your neighborhood and we need you to bring your voice to the coalition, so thanks. 
Thank you. Melissa, um, it, it, it sounds like you guys, you all, uh, uh, forgive me, you all could use uh, some more support. So how can more people become members? Thank you. That's a great question. It's easy. First, if you've not already spoken to one of the members of the CRT, give us your contact details. You can put it in the chat or reach out to our website. We would also love to talk to you. You can join our community meetings and consider working with us on one of our subcommittees. We have four. One is the light rail. One is about bus and rapid bus transit, bike pedestrian lanes, and the greenways and trails. Well, so some people... Um might might feel like they can't help with these plans and decisions maybe they don't think they're technical enough uh what would you say to someone who was on the fence about joining about why it's important uh to have their impact because your voice matters no matter what you think your voice matters now is the opportunity to provide that input don't wait until all the decisions are made and then want to change the outcome work with us now to provide your inputs and ideas. Together, we can have a greater impact. And don't worry if you're not an expert on multimodal transportation connectivity, neither am I. But I'm learning about it and how it can impact all of us. Let's join forces because our voices matter. Well, friends, there you have it. Uh, your voice matters. Uh, we want you to be a voice and to join the CRTC today. Uh, thank you so much, panelists. Um, let's let's give them all a hand. And I uh, want to come back to the game, the Queen City Rules game, which I just completely went over. So uh, let's get ready for that, my right, friends. <laughs> we have selected two contest contestants from the audience. Uh, let's bring them in. Uh, so we want to thank you for playing Queen City Rules. We have Sergio and Sierra. Let's Hello. start. With, thank you. Let's start with Sierra. Sierra, where are you from? I'm from Georgetown, South Carolina. Wonderful. And I'll give it a try. <laughs> okay. All right. Come on in, Armani. Okay. And I just put my answers in the chat. Just turn on your camera. Uh, oh, my hair is a mess. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Right. Hey, the rules are simple. Uh, we have some trivia. We have some trivia questions. Wait, Armani, where are you from? I'm sorry. Um, I'm from nowhere, but I guess Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll just all say. right. <laughs> well, okay, the rules are simple. Uh, we have some trivia questions about the history of Charlotte and our transportation options. Every correct answer uh, is a chance to spin the wheel and win our prize, uh, our grand prize. Prize. Okay, let's play. Okay, I actually know this one. I do. What year was Cats founded? Do we say it or type it? S-A-C. We both said it. C. The correct answer is C. Hey, okay. <laughs> Everybody gets a point. All right. Uh, the Charlotte Air Transportation, or CATS, is a department within the city of Charlotte and was created in 2000 after a successful public referendum in 98 to fund future transit initiatives. Um, all right. How many towns make up Mecklenburg County? B? That's it, A. B? The correct answer actually is A. Um, <gasps> What's interesting is Stallings is, was part, uh, Weddington is in Union County. Stallings was part um, Mecklenburg and part Union, but I think they might all be. So there you go. Um, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What are the four modes of grand, ground transportation you can use in our region? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I say A. Is it C? I say A. The correct answer is A. Bike, bus, light rail, and car. All right. Um, number four. How many light rail stations are there on the blue line?
or say you? I'll say D. D, okay. The correct answer. Mm -hmm. Are you ready, CC? <laughs> I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with B. All right. Uh, the correct answer is A. Twenty six. Uh. <laughs> there are twenty six light rail stations located on the blue line. Okay. Um, all right. Next question. The Charlotte region is the largest metropolitan area in the world without a what? It. E. What did you say? B as in boy. How about you, CC? Uh, I'm going to say A. You're going to say A. The correct answer is B, zoo. Um, we definitely have uh, the answer. You is know what? Zoo. <laughs> We got the Levine. <laughs> Listen, I'm only two months into the city. Okay. That's okay. It sounds like an hour and change away for the zoo. Yes. <laughs> All right. If number six. Oh. All right. So do we have a winner? Thank you. <laughs> I'm mining. All right. Congratulations to our contestants. Um, and who won that one? Was it Armani or CC? That's me. Armani. All right. So you get to spin the wheel. Let's see. Um, I hope it's Uber Eats. I can use it. <laughs> okay. Swag bag. Okay. Swag bag. All right. Congratulations, friends. Thank you for playing. Uh, Queen City rules in just a few minutes. Uh, we already did that. All right. Thank you so much. Now let's go back to where we were. Thanks, friends. You can go back off of camera. All right. Our last guest today is Aaron Sanders. Uh, Aaron is an active bus rider. Uh, he's here to shine light on his experience. Um, as a bus rider. Welcome, Aaron Sanders, to the show. Aaron, are you there? If you can uh, unmute yourself and come online, that would be wonderful. Ray, can you hear me? I can. How are you, Aaron? I've just unmuted myself, my video. One second. I'll be there one. Okay, here we go. I'm good. How are you? Great, man. It's so great to see you. Uh, so great to see you. Uh, Aaron's one of the first people I met years and years ago when I moved to Charlotte. He doesn't know that, but he is. So uh, it's great to see you. Uh, Aaron, how often uh, do you choose to ride uh, the bus here in Charlotte? Ray, uh, uh, before the pandemic, I was a daily rider of, uh, of cats. Uh, and so pretty much every day. Okay. All right. Um, so, so why do you choose to use the bus instead of other modes of transportation? Although you do use your bike. Uh, yes, I have a couple of bikes I use, but not for uh, the, uh, that's mostly for recreation, but for just daily use, I use uh, cats. And uh, why do I do that? Well, I, I enjoy it. I've been a, a bus rider for a very long time, for many years. And um that's pretty much why it's uh, I, I, many of the many, many of my destinations are, uh, let's say, 15 minutes from the center city, and I find cats very convenient. Okay. So, uh, other than the convenience, what are some of the challenges you face as a bus rider? Um, they're more like preferences and challenges, but I will mention one challenge. Uh, I think. Um, uh, if everyone is familiar, we have a transit center downtown, and uh, it's uh, it's I I've, I think there's a I feel there is a um, uh, there's a challenge with the relationship between the riders and transit law enforcement, and uh, and it's it's a very tense transit center in that way that you feel the tension as soon as you go into the transit center, and I think maybe. Uh, if we want 
safe, accessible, and equitable access, uh, I think that relationship probably needs to be evaluated. But other than that, um, uh, with, the, um, with the opening of the Lynx light rail, it's, uh, CATS has really designed a, a system of routes and what I, what I think they call uh, 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 cross, uh, cross town buses. And so from those Lynx uh, light rail stations, you can connect with a cross town bus and end up in destinations and, and uh, like could be work related or otherwise that uh, with, strict, with the uh, old system and without the light rail, some of those destinations were pretty much uh, uh, unreachable. Uh, so that's pretty much uh, how I see the, the plus and the minus of uh, my experience uh, riding cats. Thanks, Aaron. So um, as, as plans for the city's growth are, are developed, um, how would you like to see the fair allocation of resources to ensure access to all communities? Uh, yes. Uh, well, one thing I like about uh, the Charlotte Regional Transportation Coalition is, is your regional approach to uh, e uh, equity, your regional approach to safety, and your regional approach to uh, uh, accessibility. Uh, just, in, uh, just, just, just on accessibility alone, uh, I think uh, the CRTC could be invaluable in, re in advocating for persons that are, uh, are, are that need de uh, uh, ADA accessibility, uh, American Disabilities Act, uh, handicapped persons, and um, and just for safety in general. Uh, I know years ago I was. Um, riding transit in California. And there's a station there called Fort, uh, Fruitville. And uh, uh, the Fruitville station, there was a movie made just with that, with the name of, and title of that station. And uh, you probably know the story, right? Yeah. And so, and so you want safety in all the stations, you want safety on the buses. And, uh, and so I think the CRTC could really do and, to, and this and this is this is the, this is really I'm thinking about something real quick, and I'm thinking, you guys are membership based, volunteer based. I think you could do a little more. And this is not a a, a, a personal a judgment as much as it is a uh, idea that I think the CRTC could do a little more than the um, Citizens Transit Advance Advisory Group which is a little, may not be as, a, as objective. And, and, uh, and I think you could do a much, you could do a, a good job in, in advocating for the writers, advocating for uh, the public in regards to public transportation and the different modes of public transportation, biking, buses, uh, walking, all those are, uh, are, are uh, part of the uh, transit, future for Charlotte. So uh, I think I think you guys can help us ensure as much as possible yep. uh, a, a, a bright future in transit for the region. All right. Thank you so much, Aaron. It's great to to see you, even if it's just virtually. Um, <laughs> thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, and, and thank you to the audience members uh, for sticking with us. Um, we, we have a, a quick video break into the next voice you hear. Um, will be from the Sustained Charlotte Program Director, Meg Fensel. Let's connect our region now for our future. Are you in? I'm in. My name is Maria Cardarelli, I am in. I'm in. We need safe pathways to walk and to bike to school. I'm in. 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 I'm in.
Because I am in. I'm in. Let's connect our region now for our future. Are you in? Wow, I'm so inspired by all of, of what we just heard from the many residents in the Charlotte region who are excited about transportation choices. I wanna take a few moments to recognize everybody who made today possible and successful. Thank you so much to Mayor Vi Lyles and Council Member Mark Jarrell for their powerful messages. We are also joined by Mayor Pro Tem Julie Eisel, Council Member Braxton Winston, and former Mayor Patsy Kinsey, as well as incoming County Commissioner Lee Altman. I wanna especially thank Reverend Ray McKinnon for emceeing today's event, as well as for all of the amazing people who shared their, their viewpoint as either people who need access to better transportation or want to help their communities achieve that. We also are so grateful to Energy Foundation, the organization that funds the Charlotte uh, Regional Transportation um, Coalition. And I also wanna thank all of the media that were able to join us today. Sustain Charlotte is an organization whose mission is to inspire choices that lead to a healthy, equitable, and vibrant community for generations to come. And in the 10 years that we've existed, we have been advocating for the quality of life of everyone who doesn't own a car to be just as rich as it is for those of us do, who do own cars. And just over a year ago, we started to envision what it would look like to build a coalition whose leadership and decision-making is deeply rooted in community. So we convene and facilitate the coalition through Sustain Charlotte, but this is truly a community-based and community-led organization, working not only in the city of Charlotte, not only in Mecklenburg County, but really trying to unite our region, recognizing that um, transportation needs do not end at, at borders. Um, I also wanna, I see in the chat that um, council member Matt Newton is here and I wanna also thank him as well. So we re really need you to help uh, Charlotte Mecklenburg and the region to build a really truly transformational mobility network with safe, accessible and dignified opportunities for all people who live, work and play here to be able to walk, to ride a bike, to ride public transit, to enjoy our greenways. And there are some very measurable benefits of investing in a transformational mobility network. It would result in a 57% increase in access to grocery stores without the need to own a car, a 41% increase in access to dedicated bike facilities so everyone of any age and ability can ride a bike safely. 90% of the total future job growth is going to be within uh, the transformational mobility network and about 68% of our future population growth will be within that transportation network. So when, when Mayor Lyles talked about Charlotte being the fifth fastest growing city in the country, we really need to think about where the people already living here and the people who will be moving here. Where are they going to live? Will they be able to access all the benefits of our community without owning a car? So now I wanna share a call to action with you as we prepare to move into a new year. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for 2020 to be over. The pand pandemic has been challenging, but this has also been really a time for us to plan and grow together. So we hope that you will join us on January 21st for our first virtual general membership orientation meeting. It's gonna be from 6 to 7 p.m. and we'll host it on Zoom. And whether you're already a member of the coalition or you wanna become a member, or even if you just wanna learn more, this is a meeting for you. You'll get to meet the existing members, you'll get to learn about ways that you can get involved and sign up for specific opportunities to do outreach, to help with social media with your own organization. Maybe it's just to find out where that alignment is between the work of the coalition and your organization. We'll also be setting up some subcommittees to, to talk about specific modes of transportation, maybe groups to look at, at different geographic areas and, and, and that regional focus. So please join us on January 21st and we'll share a more detailed invite with you by email. Thank you so much for joining us today and I'll turn it back over to Ray. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much, Meg. And uh, again, thanks for everyone for being here. And I, I did see that we have um, uh, Council Member Matt Newton here. So I wanted to uh, say hello to him as well. Now, friends, listen, you've heard it. Um, we, we need you to join today. This is a matter of, of connecting us, a matter of equity. Uh, we need that. Uh, so please join. Uh, now, to close us out today, um, 
I would I would like to introduce you to a very special guest, a very special talent. Um, he is a spoken word artist. He's an author, and he's founder of Say Word. Uh, so, uh, friends, today I want to welcome Ja Small. Take it away, Ja. Thank you all for being here, and thank you for the opportunity. And uh, hope you enjoy. And of the birds in the sky. Drunken by the secrets of the day, floating to a measure of harmony and falling feathers, swimming in an oasis of the Carolina blue mystery and the air, finding a home on my brown skin, making a moment seemingly last a vacation and still be unafraid to take a headfirst dive into the busy of city life and the memories those lasting decades of questions, both answered and unmentioned around the common folks and owed to the commoners, those of better days when the greats fought against atrocities and eight hour work days and of the secrets, the ones that have yet to find an ear, the ones that weather all four seasons, even if it happens throughout a one week fiasco Let's just say welcome to North Carolina and to the writers and the scores of pens when the ink becomes more than a storyteller, when it rewrites foreign languages into government that has yet to waver and the ink itself still has yet to dry. And to the veterans and the homeless and the street dwellers, those who have but a lonely place in the heart of uptown where the woman finds her resting place on the same bench every night. And that man, he who fought for his tent until it cost him everything. The same man whose smile led to his poem lining his obituary in the Charlotte Observer. And oh, Charlotte, home of the bankers, home of the hustling migrants who have now taken over. Your streets now too busy for a good morning your faces unfamiliar and brand new. Most carry lingos that says, I am not from around these parts, but owed to this city, still unable to stretch past the Carolina blue of the day, yet large enough to cover the stories that tell us of your fancies, owed to North Carolina, owed to Charlotte, city that we love. Thank you. Yes. That was incredible. That was incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, for, for that, uh, Josh. Thank you, my brother. Uh, and, and again, thank you all once again for, for spending your time with us uh, this afternoon. Now, again, to our elected officials, to the panelists, uh, to our guests, everyone, please visit um, connectourregion.org and join now. Uh, because this really is about our city, it's about equity, it's about doing our part to ensure that we uh, really do close that mobility gap and seeing the connection with um, this regional, regional uh, connection with transportation and jobs and upward mobility. Again, visit connectourregion.org and join now and sign up to participate in our info session on January 21st at 6 p.m. Thanks everyone, have a safe evening and mask up. Have a great afternoon. Goodbye.